In this video, I would like to introduce the concept of consumer surplus. I will show how to calculate it algebraically, I will show how it looks like on a graph, and I'll also explain it intuitively. Now, if you notice, I still have the same graph that I had in the previous video where we calculated the market equilibrium. For the sake of this video, I erase that computation because it's unnecessary for now, but we're still applying it to the same example. We're still using the same equilibrium quantity and price in order to do the computations for the consumer surplus. Now, on a logical level, intuitively, what does it mean to have a consumer surplus? Why does it have to be a surplus? A surplus of what? The surplus is a surplus of benefit, of utility for the customers because they are paying less than they are willing to pay. In order to understand this, I invite you all to think about the demand curve as the willingness to pay of customers, okay? I'm gonna write it as WTP, willingness to pay of customers, willingness to pay of consumers. That means that at this given level of quantity, okay, let's suppose that at this given level of 10 units of quantity, customers are willing to pay, for instance, $18, okay, per unit. At least graphically, it looks to be quite accurate. Suppose that this is the case. However, the price on the market is $10, isn't it? The price on the market is the equilibrium price of $10. However, the customers at this given level of quantity are willing to pay 18. The fact that they are paying 10 instead of 18 gives them a surplus, gives them a benefit, okay? This distance over here is a benefit to customers because they are paying less than what they are willing to pay. And with the same logic, if I move along the curve and I check this quantity level, let's suppose that this is 50 units. For 50 units of products, customers are willing to pay, for instance, let's say $16 per unit. Again, the market price is $10 per unit, so it's like a cost saving for them. They are not paying as much as they are willing to, meaning that they have the capacity to pay that money, but they are not. That money could be used somewhere else. It's a surplus. It stays with them. Graphically, if I keep doing these things, I will draw so many lines that I will end up shading, okay, the entire triangle, which is the area between the demand curve, which shows the willingness to pay of consumers, and the equilibrium market price, in our case, of $10 per unit. So I hope intuitively you understood this, and I hope graphically it makes sense. With that being said, let's do the algebra behind it all. What do we have here? If you notice, it's a triangle, and I just said it's the area of the triangle. Well, it's a right angle triangle. We have a 90 degree angle over here, so we have to use the formula for calculating the area of a right angle triangle. Now, I'm gonna remind you all what that area is. That's one over two multiplied with the base multiplied with the height. So what is the base here? Let's check. The base is this one that I'm highlighting right now, and as we can see, it's going to be 100, right? This is the quantity level of 100. So therefore, the base, we're going to have 1 over 2 times 100 units, okay? 100 units. Now, what is the height? The height is the price. The height is on the price axis. It's over here. So what do we have? We have the difference between 20 and 10. That gives us a, a price of $10 per unit. So I'm gonna write it dollar per unit, okay? Now we can calculate it, it's a fairly simple computation. So let's do so, I'm gonna change colors real fast. We're going to have that the area, which is also equal to the consumer surplus, this is our consumer surplus, is going to be equal to one over two times 100 times 10. 102 cancels out, so we have a 50 over here, 50 times 10, is 500. What else can cancel out? Units with units cancel out. So we have a consumer surplus worth $500. Basically, there's a value of $500 that customers keep for themselves that they could technically use on consumption of other goods. I hope this all makes sense. I appreciate you all watching. If you like the video, please make sure to subscribe. In the next video, I'm going to introduce the concept of producer surplus. We are done.